Hi, this is Kylie Thompson, host of Food for Thought. Thanks for listening to the following podcast on Public House Media. Welcome to Beauties and Head Cannons, where we're nerdy and you probably are too. I'm Tegan, and I'm here today with Lindsay, and we're going to be talking a little bit uh, about gaming today, um, how it's changed since since Lindsay and I started gaming years ago. Um, you know, even though I started kind of late, it has changed a lot since the early 2000s. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some more modern game offerings and what that's like. Um, but first, uh, we normally do have Geek on Fleek, but we're, again, bypassing that this week. So let's get into the episode. Yeah, so this week I really wanted to pick Tegan's brain about um, games, whether it's computer gaming, role-playing games, or um, I know every once in a while, whenever we're talking, I'll mention like this, that, or the other com- system for gaming, and we're always like, uh, yeah, I don't know anything about that. So hopefully I'll ask questions Tegan can actually answer. Um, and yeah, because I, you know, like I haven't played any games since... Um, before I was out of high school, so like 2004, I guess. No, that's a lie. I played World of Warcraft and Rift and EverQuest, and that might be it, actually. <laughs> so, well, you know, this is like um, actually perfect timing because we're recording this a little bit earlier than we normally would, and Sony just had their presentation. And so, Ooh. yeah, so they have some things coming up that is really, really interesting. So, okay, so wait, you can't just do that. Tell me what, what, what did Sony announce that was really interesting? Okay, so I mean, you know, obviously, you know, they've, they've announced for a while that, you know, they're going to be releasing the PlayStation 5. And so we finally, yesterday actually, just got a look at like what the PS5 is actually going to look like, what the controller is going to look like. And we got some previews for a bunch of different games. Um, Probably the biggest one is the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn, which is a game that I have played and that I really, really enjoyed. And so I'm actually really excited to see the sequel. It's going to be a long, long time until I play it because I'm the kind of person who I, I never buy consoles when they're new. Like they're just, it's way too expensive. I yeah. always, I always just wait and wait and wait until they drop to below a certain price point. And then I usually get it like on sale or refurbished or something like that because, you know, I, I just don't have the money to just drop like that, <laughs> you know? Oh, well, right. Not, not a whole lot of us do, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, it's going to be a long while, but I am excited to eventually play that in the future. You know, it's like I right. like I had heard that they were developing it, but now that I know it's coming, it's like, okay, now I, you know, it, it's tangible now. I, I have something right. to look forward to specifically. Right, because it's actually going to happen mm-hmm. as opposed to being a dream that everyone's having. Yeah, um, instead of just being talk. Because, you know, developers can talk about this and that. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then, you know, something happens, something changes, it gets delayed, it gets canceled. You know, you you never know what might happen in between talking about doing something Mm -hmm. and actually doing it. Yeah, I I feel like we've actually had quite a few conversations where companies have said they're going to do something and haven't or did something completely wrong. So I think I understand that. Um, did Sony announce anything else? Uh, there were a couple of different types of games. There's a new Ratchet and Clank, um, which is really exciting because it's been a long, long time since we've had a new Ratchet and Clank a game, it feels like. At least it feels like to me. Um, and then there's a new Hitman game that's coming out. I'm not super interested in that, but I mean, I know that's something that a lot of other people are going to be interested in. Um, and there's another one... Um, that's coming out. It kind of almost gave me vibes of like um, the game like Journey and Abzu. Um, I know it's not by the same people and so it's probably going to be different but like artwork and like aesthetic um, 
you know, style and everything. Like, it really mm-hmm. reminded me of that. It's called Solar Ash. And it, it just looks like, you know, one of those kind of really neat, unique kind of games that I've kind of gravitated toward a little bit outside of, like, my major role-playing game that I usually just sort of latch on to, you know? Sure. Um, so, PlayStation 5, do we... Do we know, like, what the price point on that's going to be? We do not, because that was actually one of the things. Um, I was watching Camelot 331, um, and he was, like, live streaming, reacting to it as they were, like, doing it. And that was one of the oh. things. Like, he was looking for a price point, and there was no price point. So, yeah. That that's, <laughs> that doesn't really that bode me well. Out. Yeah, that, that doesn't really <laughs> bode well. Like I'm like that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. it's, it's going to be like probably five, six hundred bucks. I, I'm guessing. Maybe I'm off, but I'm like. And if you're keeping my, it a secret. Ah. Yeah. Like my pessimistic <laughs> mind is like, oh, yeah, it's going to be way expensive. Yeah. Astronomical. And it was funny, too, because, you know, we've we've talked a lot recently about um, companies that have gone um, working remotely and gone to work from home. So when uh, the company I work for was uh, starting to do that. I was all over Tiger Direct and Walmart.com trying to find a laptop that would do what I needed to do. And it was so funny because there was such a disparity between what was available on the shelves um, at Walmart when I finally like actually did decide, okay, I'm going to go to the store and actually look at these things and compare them to each other as opposed to, you know, dabbling around and, on Tiger Direct and It was funny to me because the difference between a computer that you could use for gaming and a computer that I would use for work was an astronomical price difference. It was like $300 to $600 for a eh, semi-decent laptop that would do what I needed it to do um, versus like a $2,300 laptop for gaming. And those things were like heavy duty, gorgeous pieces of machinery, but I don't know what planet I would need a laptop like that to be able to do the work. Yeah. And I mean, I'm a game. Yeah. And I mean, like, I'm, I'm not like all heavy duty in the like different, um, mechanics of PCs and like how they work <laughs> and putting them together. Like that's one of the things that I am like an idiot child when it comes to that kind of thing. Like, I, I know, like, you know, they, I, I know, like, so many people have said, oh, you can just build one yourself. It's so easy. If you can put together a Lego right. set, like, yeah, you can put together a computer. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm over here like, um, I can't even put together a Lego set. So I don't know what you're talking right. about, about that I'm to me not for. not a builder yeah. ever on like, anything. So. <laughs> like, like I, I've looked at, like, you know, people trying to explain it. I'm like, I... I know this is English, but I do not understand any of these words <laughs> and what they mean. Like, it is not computing at all. So, I mean, that's mainly why I stick to yeah. a console, because I don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Um, because, what kind of games would you need to be able to, to... Like, what kinds of games do you play on one of those heavy-duty laptops like that? I mean, pretty much anything. I mean, as long as it will work with your graphics card and anything like that, you could play anything. And one of the things that, like, I would eventually like to get a PC for is mainly so that I can (laughs) mod certain games without any restrictions or anything like that. So... Okay, so I'm not being stupid here, but you've got to talk to me like I'm a baby child. What what does mod a game mean? It, It means you just... You modify certain things about a game. Right now, on console... Um, both PS4 and Xbox One, you can um, use mods on Fallout 4 and Skyrim Special Edition. Um, basically, what you do is on the start screen, there's a little extra option that says mods. You go in there and there's a whole different array of mods. There's graphic mods that kind of change up how the world looks, and maybe add some things, hmm. um, enables you to do things. There's always like a little cheat mod that enables you to like increase your level give you god mode you can give you like um crafting things like basically anything that you could ever want you can find it a cheat mod um you can add different armors different clothing different weapons different gear you can change how people look 
You can change how your character looks. I mean, there's just, a, you can add animals. I mean, there, there's so many different things you can do with mods. Um, but on console, there's more restrictions because of the hardware and everything that's involved. You know, it's, it's, it's not as subtle as what you can do on a computer. Okay, so it's probably more precise on a computer. Yeah, and you have um, a lot more variety because also any of the mods you use there, you have to use from Bethesda.net, which Bethesda.net has very, very specific terms of service. And if you violate those terms of service, mm -hmm. then the mod gets taken down. On Nexus, there's, it's a lot looser than that. You know, there's okay. a lot of different things that you can do that would violate Bethesda's terms of service, but is perfectly fine on Nexus. So, you know, you're kind of left out of the loop with that, which, you know, for better, for worse, that's just the way it is when it comes to modding on a console. But that's really kind of one of the reasons I'd like to do that. Um, also, I'd love to kind of get into modding or trying to mod Dragon Age and things like that. Um, just because I think that would be a lot of fun. And that's, you know, not a game that you can really mod on console. So, you know, right. What's What's the draw of being able to mod one of those games? Like, why would you do that as opposed to just playing the game as is? Well, I mean, I can only speak for myself because, I mean, obviously there's tons and tons of different types of mods. I don't even touch a whole, like, areas of them. For me, um, mm -hmm. I go for a lot of beautification mods because, eh, to be honest, character creation a lot of times leaves a lot to be desired. Um, you pretty much are trying to pretty up a potato sometimes. And so, you know, right. you want your character to look better. And so you can add different types of hair, different, you know, things to make the face look different and uh, look better. Um, you can add different, I personally like to add lots of different armors and different weapons because I kind of get tired of seeing the same old things all the time. You know, I, I like a little bit of variety. I want, I want something a little different, you know? So, that, that yeah. kind of thing is why I mod. I like things to be a little bit different. Um, I don't always go like way outside of the lore and get, you know, chuck in things that some people do that are just kind of um, really out there. Like you can get like My Little Pony stuff or Deadpool in mm. Skyrim. And it's like, that's, you know, I, I don't want to seem like I'm a purist, but it's like when I personally play, it's like I, if I play Skyrim, I want, I want a more fantastical aesthetic, you know, whereas if I play Fallout, yeah. I want a more post-apocalyptic aesthetic, you know? So it's just, I, I like to stick with those aesthetics because that's the game I'm playing. So yeah, sure. That, that's pretty, that's pretty much no, why I play. Okay. And so now I'm going to jump back to, um, con consoles then the, the two main ones are still Xbox and PlayStation, right? Uh, is yeah. A, um, Switch is really, is Switch is really coming up though with Nintendo. I mean, they, Switch is offering a whole lot, um, as far as portability, as far as playability. They have a lot of, um, different games that they offer. They're having lots of different ports that are coming over now. Um, from what I hear, like some of them are really good. Some of them are not so good. I know specifically um, the Outer Worlds port was not that great. I'm hoping that they'll be able to patch that because that's a really great game that um, I think people should really, you know, have a chance to play. And if, you know, the game isn't running quite right, you know, I'd like it to run better. You know, I want people to have a good experience with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are pretty much the main three that are, you know, going on right now. Besides PC, of course. Yeah. Do we know if the Xbox is coming out with anything in conjunction with PS5? There's the Xbox I... Series X. Um, I'm not sure when exactly it's coming out or what's going on with that. Um, but I, I know, I believe they already unveiled the design. And it basically looks like a big box. <laughs> like, a, like a big rectangular box. <laughs> I mean, that's what it looked like before, right? What what does PS5 look like? Uh, PS5, no joke, and it's going to sound really weird when I say it, but anybody, if you haven't seen it yet, go look it up and see if I'm not wrong. It looks like <laughs> it looks like one of those tall rectangular routers, and somebody put two large uh, white envelopes on either side of them. <laughs> like, that's, okay. uh, that's a little bit taller than the router. I, I swear... Once you see it, you will you will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I feel like I kind of need to look it up now. <laughs> um, okay, so Nintendo Switch, what do you mean portability? Um, 
I don't have to like hook it up to my television and no. sit in front of my television like a drone. No, because switch like even like the main switch, you can just like take the little console piece and you can go and it has a screen. You can do do your stuff on there if you want. That was like one oh, of so the, it's like a handheld. Yeah, it can be handheld or you can like plug it up to your TV. And they also, oh, but you can't play a whole lot of games on the handheld, can you? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't. Is it a thing? I. Oh uh, yeah, there's oh. I mean, there's quite a, there's quite a few like different okay. games you can't. I mean, obviously, you know, power issues wise, you know, you're not going to be able to take it and then just play the same thing like for hours and hours, you know, disconnected from a power source, you know. But I mean, that's pretty much yeah. any any little handheld game you have that's going to be an issue, you know. Okay, so I'm looking at the PlayStation Five design photos, mm-hmm. and I kind of like it, but. <laughs> I can I can see the um You can see the old I can router see where can you come you? from. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Cuz I it had does one of those look like routers. two big what, like two big envelopes on the yeah. sides of it. Yeah, I can see it. Now that I'm looking at like the turned pictures, yeah. It's kind of cool though. It's kind of sleek. I kind of like it. Oh. And it it's got like a wider base on the one side too. I guess is that where you put a game in? Um, well, I know they're going to have two versions. <laughs> one is going to have that disk drive, and one oh, is yeah. going to be okay. That's the one I'm looking at. Then one's going to be completely digital. Okay. Which I know yeah. I have. Okay, friends, I can see the difference now. Which I know I'm going to have friends <laughs> that are not going to be happy with that because they like physical games and stuff. So yeah. I know yeah. that I have certain friends that are going to be not very happy about that kind of thing. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so I have a lot of um. It, I don't have a lot, but I know of people who are always talking about following me on Twitch. Mm-hmm. What is that? Uh, Twitch is just a streaming service. Um, so you go on there and you can stream any game that you're playing and people will see what you're playing pretty much in real time. Um, and I mean, you don't have to even play games to stream on Twitch. Like you can just stream like video of yourself doing whatever. Things. Yeah, I mean, okay. as, as long as it doesn't violate Twitch's terms of service, obviously. But, yeah, I mean, you, you can stream just about anything on Twitch. So what's the difference between that and YouTube? Mm, not that much. Um, YouTube, you can live stream on, but the main thing is that Twitch, you don't upload videos to, like, just so that people can just go and watch long term. It's pretty much just for streaming. YouTube, for, like, live services. Yeah, and so, like... Okay. So YouTube, you can live stream, but then like you have videos that you upload and put out there and people just watch at their leisure. Okay. So that's, you can do that on YouTube, but you can't do that on Twitch. Nope. Nope. You just stream on Twitch. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I can hear you like going, yeah, Lindsay, that's what live streaming is. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, and I, I do also feel like you've told me that before. And each time I'm like, why would you want to do that? Why would you <laughs> want to upload yourself doing something in a live? It, it's funny, like social media phenomenon of like, mm-hmm. you know, you see people who are selling their direct supply or direct media stuff all the time on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, but for some reason to me, doing that on um, a live streaming uh, service doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I, this is me also being a co-host of a podcast. So <laughs> <laughs> to, I should really shut my mouth while I'm ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, it just, it just kind of offers a, a wide variety of entertainment, kind of like live TV, except you know, instead of maybe the different offerings you might get on TV, you know, you get more specialized offerings on Twitch. Maybe something that you're more interested in mm-hmm. as compared to something you might see on TV. Right. And is there a way to, like, search for what you're looking for? Oh, like, yeah. you're looking for something really specific? Oh, yeah. I, I've streamed on Twitch before. Okay. <laughs> what did you stream? I kind of want to um, know now. Um, I've streamed a, I streamed a little bit of Skyrim uh, gameplay, mm-hmm. and I've... Uh, I actually, mainly what I do is I stream little things for videos that I can upload to YouTube um, because they actually make it super, super simple to do. And so I mainly do just stream for that. Um, I did the Wicked Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts quest for Dragon Age Inquisition um, because 
Lee really, really hates that quest, and I really hate it too. And I basically, mm-hmm. I basically have that quest down to a science, to where you can get like max court approval and get a truce ending, and it's all wrapped up in a neat, tidy little bow, and you don't really have to like mess around with a whole bunch of stuff. It's like you, you just get in there, do exactly what's what I do, and you can get that ending. And so I uploaded it. I did it. I streamed it on Twitch. Uploaded it to YouTube so that. You know, if Lee or if anybody else wanted a reference as to how to get that particular ending in that sure. quest, they can go and do it. I also streamed um, Here Lies the Abyss with all of these different little quests in the Fade because there's a couple of different um, quests that you can actually get and do in the Fade, but they aren't all marked. Um, there's a couple of, like, things you have to do for one particular quest in <laughs> the the uh, one location is not marked at all. So you have to know where to go to do it. And then there's one that's just like completely unmarked that you basically have to literally do it in order to do it. You, you wouldn't know it was there if you didn't just do it. So I streamed that so that he could see what I did. And so that he could follow along with that. And then I also have uploaded a bunch of like, they're called, we call them sliders in Dra- <laughs> Dragon Age terminology. Basically, they're for character creation. So the uh, character creation thing for Inquisition is uh, different. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. It's it's very okay. different than any other character creation thing I've done before. And it took me a long time to kind of get the hang of it. And what, you know, a lot of people will do is they'll upload sliders to say, hey, if you like the way that this character looks, go to the creation screen and do this. And so this is what this slider has to be. This is what this slider has to be in order to get this look. So I have quite a few different sliders on there um, just because I've kind of gotten the knack of different types of Mm -hmm. characters. So I don't know. It's it's kind of fun. I I know I've gotten a few views. So obviously somebody out there likes it. (laughs) So you can do like, um, you know, when I was growing up, I I would go onto websites and print out Mm -hmm. walkthroughs. where you had to like read whatever somebody yep. told you to do. Mm-hmm. I remember and then those. You did that <laughs> and you got through it. Yeah. Um, and I did that for really one wonderful DOS based. Uh, um, uh, what was it that I played? There was King's Quest. I played King's mm-hmm. Quest a lot and Final Fantasy once I had the emulators and. There's one, Laura Bow. Laura Bow was my favorite. That was also a Sierra online mm-hmm. game. Um, but yeah, I'd print out the walkthroughs and then go through them like step by step to get through the ending. And they were always like things that I would have never thought to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that's basically what a bunch of you know things that I watch with regards to gaming, and this that's why I had uploaded the few videos that I had as well, because it's it's basically the natural next step to walkthroughs is instead of just reading what's on there, because sometimes when you read a walkthrough, like you read something, but it doesn't mm-hmm. really make sense and you, you have to actually still figure it out. But yeah. when you watch it, it's like, okay, all right, yeah, I get okay. it. You know, right. so that it's basically just like the next step to that. Now, you know, instead of just seeing what, you know, like reading what you have to do, you can actually see, okay, that's yeah. what I do. Well, and what I think is really funny, um, you said that is reading the walkthroughs would say things like look through the window or look through yeah. the picture. And, and it's like, like, what window, what picture, where? Yeah, which, what? And then um, with especially the Laura Bow Colonel's Bequest, that one was my favorite. Mm-hmm. And I'm like definitely aging myself at this point, but that game was the coolest. And you had to give commands by typing into a, you know, a command box. Yeah. And it, you'd have to tell it, like, look through the picture and it would be like, Sometimes the um, the computer, the way it would respond would be like, well, what do you mean, look through? Come on, <laughs> Laura, you can't do that. And it was just so great because I'd be like, but that's what the walkthrough told me to do. Yeah, so, it's like you have to go through a very specific <laughs> order, tell it very specific things. And if exactly. you don't do it just right, then, well, that that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay, so from there, let's graduate to online RPGs. Um, and things like that, because Ooh, yes. that's really where most of my experience was in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I played EverQuest. I um, met a guy on EverQuest, Ooh. and like that was all my cool high school years, uh, <laughs> was playing this 
online game and um I don't know. I was never like, you know, there are people who play these games and they get to like level 125 and they're like super awesome, amazing this. And I don't think I ever got any character above like 50 at best. Um, I guess that says a lot about like how much of a gamer I really am because I, I would play, but most, most of the time it was to hang out with him or to hang out with him. I'm like, I can't even think of a time that I went on just to, play for playing sake. And I guess that's like the, the big difference. Like I, even now I think, okay, what, what kind of game coming out right now would I be interested in playing? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think, I think cyberpunk looks cool. All the, all the concept stuff that I've seen looks, looks cool. Yes. But I don't know if it looks cool because I want to, I want to like make a cyberpunky outfit and do a photo shoot in it. Or (laughs) if I actually want to play the game, like (laughs) I couldn't tell you actually where my motivations lie with that one. It looks cool. Well, I mean, when it comes out, I will hopefully be able to get it. And so I'll obviously be sharing screenshots of it on beauties and headcanons, Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. So you can take a look. When I share, so I have to live vicariously decide. through you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and decide, hey, do I want to play that, or do I just want to look at the screenshots? <laughs> or do I just want to watch uh, Tegan play? Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so so I played EverQuest, and that had really m- more rudimentary graphics than anything I see nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I really enjoyed Rift and World of Warcraft, and that's where things ended for me, which is why, like, whenever you talk about games that you're playing that you can um, have relationships with NPCs and um, change the storyline based off of, you know, like your choose your own adventure type stuff going on in each game, it really, like, blows my mind. I guess I, I never really thought of gaming in that way um Mm -hmm. especially to play it and then to be able to play it again making different choices and having a completely different game Mm -hmm. um well played maybe (laughs) that that's that's kind of that's kind of one of the jokes in like the mass effect and dragon age communities is like we restart a game we make like a new character and then we make all the same decisions and romance the same character (laughs) but it's so true because it's like a lot of the choices that you make like some of them I just, I can't make. Like, um, okay, for instance, like in Dragon Age Origins, there's a young child that's possessed, and you have a couple of different choices as to how to handle that. You can kill the child, you can use blood magic to sacrifice the mother and free the child from the demon, or you can go and uh, handle the quest at the mage tower and bring the mages over and cleanse the child and then everybody lives. And it's like, I, I can't just not do the last option. It's like, I, I can't kill him. I can't kill the mom, even though the mom is really annoying. Like it, it just doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't feel right. I can't do anything, but that way, you know, and it's, so it, it's kind of like that. It's, and some people have absolutely no problem going through and kind of picking like more evil choices for things or, you know, maybe not evil, but like not so ideal choices. But yeah. for me, it's like, there are certain things it's like, I just, I don't even want to do in a video game. It, it's like, I, I, can't. I guess it sort of goes by your own convictions as to like what you're actually it's like, willing to be able to do in that sense. It's like, I, I can't be mean to NPCs. I just can't. I'm sorry. Wow, it's kind of cool that, that <laughs> that's how you are though, because I feel like it would be a really good um, release of frustrations to treat a NPC badly for other reasons, you know, like yeah. almost like a uh, anger management kind of deal where you play. And I don't want to get into like, you know, how people say violent games and create yeah. violent behavior in real life. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, no, like, it's like, a, you know, you can vent that in a more healthy way. And like, right. like for me, like I honestly have no compunctions with being rude to NPCs who are rude to me. So like, mm-hmm. so like Vivian from Dragon Age Inquisition is just, I cannot stand her and I have no problems being rude to her, but <laughs> okay. like, like other characters who are nice to me, I'm like, I, I can't be mean to them because they're nice to me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That makes sense. It's like a mutual exchange. Like I, I have absolutely no problem telling off Udina in mass effect because he is just 
he's a very typical politician and I cannot stand him. Sure. But, you know, so I will always side with Anderson over Udina. But other than that, it's just like, I, I, I can't be mean to Anderson. I can't be mean to my crew. You know, I, I, I will completely fail a renegade playthrough because I just, I, I can't, I can't be mean to my friends. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, like on the flip side of things or like maybe another episode, there's, um, that one television show where the NPCs were, um, characters that were like in an actual world. Oh, Westworld. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Where their days were repeating, but they still had like uh, self-aware feelings and mm-hmm. other stuff going on. So it's almost like if those NPCs in Dragon Age were actually self-aware, how they would react to, us you know like the users yeah dude <laughs> that'd and be it's, crazy yeah and it's it's just you know it, it's amazing how much just a little bit of coding can really you know bring out certain things in you like bring out certain emotions make you feel certain things and it's just like you know logically you know this is just coding. This is just, right, right. you know, this is not real, but it feels real. And yeah, all the artistry know. that goes into it for sure invokes different feelings and different thoughts in, mm-hmm. in the person who's playing. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And hey, it's, what's, what's gaming corner this week? Ah, gaming corner. So, um, there's been a lot of kind of criticism of fairly recent RPGs that they kind of lost a lot of these meaningful choices that you make in games. Oh. Um, because, you know, and it's true, like, games like Dragon Age Inquisition, Skyrim, Fallout 4, they're kind of skewed a little bit towards a more casual audience, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to be a casual gamer. I I feel like that's something that gets a bad rap, but it is not a bad thing to be a casual gamer. Um, But it, a game does lose certain things when you kind of, I don't want to say dumb it down, but when you kind of streamline it or when you, you know, put a story in there that you have to follow and then, you don't get a whole lot of choice leeway or choices as to how to sure, handle sure. it. Sure, well, sure. There are some exceptions, though, and one of them is the Outer Worlds. Um, it's, of course, it's no real surprise to me because it's made by Obsidian, the same people who made Fallout New Vegas. And, you know, Fallout New Vegas is, you know, typically hailed by Fallout fans as, you know, as far as role-playing, just a really great experience as far as, you know, you get, like, different factions and you have reputation within the factions. And, you know, if what your reputation with a certain faction dips below a certain point, they'll literally attack you on sight, which is really, really interesting to experience as you're, you know, traveling the wasteland. Um, even if you go to their headquarters and even if your reputation is okay with them, if you bring a certain companion with you that clashes with them they'll immediately attack you so it's it's a it's kind of a very realistic take on you know certain concepts um and obviously like doing certain quests will affect that doing um it will actually lock off other quests for you so you actually can't access them at all because you know your reputation is bad and you can't recover it after a certain point um so it, it's a whole bunch of you know what we say meaningful choices that really affect the world around you. Um, in the outer worlds, you get kind of the same thing with the, uh, with the factions, with the reputation and things like that. But with the quest too, you get a lot of interesting choices. And one of my friends brought up this, (laughs) this amazing, (laughs) ending to the Outer Worlds that I actually did not know existed at all. Um, Very quick rundown of the Outer Worlds. Basically, there were two ships sent to colonize this um, colony in outer space called Halcyon. There's the Groundbreaker and there's the Hope. And the Hope's skip drive, the thing that helped it go through space really fast, it basically broke. And it's been kind of lost for like 70 years. And the scientist... Uh, this rebel scientist has rescued you and you're, you know, basically set loose and you have, you know, 
the choice to help him or turn him into the board. And if you turn him into the board, obviously you get the board ending. If you don't and you work with him, then, you know, you get his ending. Um, but there is a certain point where you get on the hope and you have to use your ship and its skip drive in order to get the hope to where you need it to go. And if you have a low intelligence and you don't have certain crew members with you and you do the whole calculations yourself, instead of skipping to the point that you need to go to, you skip directly into the sun and you die and that's it. And the game's over. <laughs> There's no do over. Oh. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, I had never known that that was an option in the game until my friend told me about that. And I'm sitting there like, holy crap, what a way to end a game. Wow. <laughs> I talk about a meaningful choice, though. I mean, you know, that that speaks to, you know, if you didn't invest in your intelligence, if you didn't invest in certain perks, or if you didn't bring certain companions along with you, um, yeah, you're, you're done for. That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. And if you didn't know that that was an option, like donezo. Yeah. I have, I, I'm kind of curious as to who discovered that because, oh, like intelligence is one of those <laughs> things I usually invest in. Because, right, you know, right. If you don't invest in it, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because, my goodness. Because there is actually there is actually what they call the idiot playthrough where you have really low intelligence and you actually get very it, other NPCs actually have very specific lines for you. And you have very specific lines of dialogue mm -hmm. that okay. is only unlocked when you have that low intelligence. So I actually do want to do a low intelligence run. At some yeah. point, I'll That'd just have cool. to, I'll just have to make sure to bring like certain companions with me so that you know I don't skip into the <laughs> sun. Don't go into the sun. <laughs> so yeah, I... yeah, for for the like the ending of this episode though, like I wanted to to I wanted to like make sure you know that there's no other questions I have, and really I don't. Um, but I do think that, geez, gaming has taken on such a different style than it. Mm -hmm than it used to have. And especially like watching, you know, uh, different episodes of different um, television shows and um, Netflix and whatever else that were really imitating life in mm -hmm. such an interesting way between, you know, how they've uh, per 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 conceptualized um, things like VR and, um, different gameplay NPC interactions and stuff. It, it feels so very much like we're, um, you know, art imitating life in a different kind of way. Yeah. Just so very, uh, you know, your, your intelligence and your interactions and mm -hmm. your character learns and doesn't learn how to do things, um, through the game. Mm -hmm. It makes it so much more like real life. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting looking back at, you know, older games where, you know, they, I'm not going to say they weren't fun because they definitely were, but compared to games these days, they weren't as accessible. They weren't the kind of games that you could just sit down and pick up and play. You know, you had mm -hmm. to know what you were doing. You had to really think about it. You had to spend time on it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as time has gone on, obviously a lot of the gamers who, you know, used to game when they were younger, they've grown up now, you know, they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, even older. And, you know, they don't always have the same amount of time to devote to that. So, right, right. you know, as certain games, especially, you know, RPGs have kind of, you know, gotten geared towards more casual players because, you know, we just, we don't always have the time for that. We have lives, we have families, we have jobs now, you know, we're, it's, life is not as simple as it used to be. And, you know, I know that some people don't always like that because they're like, oh, I miss, you know, these games and what they did. I wish we had more of that. And I, I understand, you know, you want something a little different. You want something that's what you kind of remember, but, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to be a casual gamer. I don't think it's a bad thing to, you know, have games that can appeal to casual gamers. Um, you know, compared to some of the older games, like I, 
for instance, I absolutely love the Dragon Age series, but the thing is, is if I had started playing Origins, I probably would have never would have played the other games. Because right. the combat system, as as much as I personally love the game, the combat system is clunky as all get out. It's very frustrating. Like, half the time I feel like I'm fighting the combat system itself along with the enemy. And the way, like, the specializations and the perks and everything are set up, it's like, my first run through, I did not understand anything. And I severely crippled my warden to the point where I could not I couldn't even finish the final fight against the Archdemon without, um, without dying. <laughs> and like, I, mm. I, I was never able to finish that final fight because I, she was not leveled and specialized and spec'd out properly. Um, obviously like I looked into it more, I researched more and I went through and I did the exact same, uh, class and everything. And I was able to beat the Archdemon. No problem. But mm-hmm. it's just that level of knowledge. It's like, if you don't know, you can't just jump in and do this. You have to know what you're right. doing. And I personally have to love the world enough to keep going and keep trying. So if I had started with Origins, I would have just given up and been like, you know, I, I can't do this. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I am not invested enough. But starting out with Inquisition and then going back, you know, getting invested in this world, in these different characters, in this story you know, going back, then I have this reason and this motivation to keep going. So, you know, I I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to, you know, be a little bit more simplistic, you know, are there disadvantages to it? Sure. But Mm -hmm. I think the advantages outweigh that just personally. Yeah. I mean, I, I love that there's, so many different opportunities to learn and change how you play a game because it, it makes it so much more multidimensional. Um, but I also like can appreciate that there's isn't anything or th- there might not be very many options for someone who mm-hmm. only has, you know, two hours to sit down and, um, you know, play a game. It, it seems like more often than not, we end up just watching two hours of a television show or something, you know, yeah. cause you, you just don't have the ability to devote your time to that. Mm-hmm. Um, consistently anyway, cause I, <laughs> yeah, cause it's a special kind of concentration. You're not just sitting there mindlessly, you know, doing something. You're actually, right. you're thinking about your choices. You're, you know, um, you have certain strategies that you have to, you know, you have to fight some enemies one way and other types of enemies. You might have to fight them another way, you know, like it's, You know, there's a lot, it's a lot more involved than just, you know, mindlessly sitting there. Exactly. Okay. And so with that, um, Tegan, how do people find us on social media? Uh, Well, we are on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we're on Tumblr. Um, Under Tumblr, we're on, we're just under beauties and head cannons. On Twitter and Instagram, we're under beauties underscore cannons and then on facebook you just search beauties and head cannons by public house media and we should pop right up there and we post i try to put out posts every tuesday wednesday and friday and occasionally i might throw a post or two somewhere in between if (laughs) if i can get around to it social media is exhausting in its own way (laughs) yes it has been especially lately as well so (laughs) with that um i'm Lindsay, and i'm tegan and thanks for getting nerdy with us today on beauties and headcanons cannons.